additional discussion, please note this request during your comments. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers? Yes, sir, we have four speakers, and our first one is Nate Horseman. Good evening. I'm just here tonight to correct the record from the last meeting. There were some things said about me to me and to this board by a member of the Planning and Zoning Committee that were not true. He was also allowed to single me out not once but twice, and from everything that I have read and understand about decorum, speakers from this podium are not allowed to address members of the audience. The mayor has stated this many times himself, yet this person was given free reign to do just that. He opened his comments by stating that he, and I quote, hadn't planned on speaking, but after I saw Mr. Horseman in the audience, I couldn't refuse. Then he went on to state it was said in the last meeting by him that religion was not involved in the Constitution in the begin in the start, I'm paraphrasing, of the Constitution. He couldn't even string a few sentences together to make his point. Anyway, first of all, those statements were not made by me. They were made by a gentleman who spoke after me named Damian Porfino. He pretty much spent his whole five minutes explaining his thoughts on religion and the Constitution, yet somehow his words got put into my mouth and twisted by the speaker I'm referring to, and I just wanted to correct the record. I did not make those statements. Later on in his comments, after citing a few verses from the Bible, he called me out again. He stated, and I quote, Mr. Horseman upsets me. Why? Because he's the perfect reason why most of us are extremely uncomfortable. Because he's angry, he's irritating, he's uneducated. Read up on the Bible and what we stand for. End quote. I'm the reason why most of you are extremely uncomfortable. I'm not a drag queen. And if my comments make this individual uncomfortable, then that's his problem, not mine or anyone else's. I'm uncomfortable with a lot of things that are said from this podium, but I've never singled anyone out in the audience when making my comments. I let it slide the first time, but after the second time, I'd had enough. And then I did get angry and irritated. And when I tried to remind the mayor that speakers from this podium are not allowed to address people in the audience, he threatened to move me from the room. So I ask, is there no decorum in this room anymore, or is there only selective decorum? I apologize for my outburst from the audience. But again, I'd had enough, and I can hope you understand why. This guy doesn't like me. I get it. Last year, he sent the sheriff's office to my work because someone apparently plowed through his yard and ran over all of his Trump signs or whatever he has in his yard. And when the sheriff showed up, he told them it was probably that Nate Horseman guy. And the next thing you know, I have the law at my place of business questioning me over something that I did not or would never do. It was quick, quickly determined that the car, did the, the car that did the damage to his property was not even close to the kind of car that I drive, but that still doesn't change the fact that he targeted me simply because he doesn't like me or what I have to say. Now remember, I said the sheriff showed up, not the Branson Police Department. So this obviously indicates to me that he is not even a city of Branson resident. I looked it up. His address is out of the city limits and not even in Taney County. He lives in Stone County. So how is he even allowed to serve on the Planning and Zoning Committee? It is my understanding that one has to reside in the city limits to serve on any board or committee. His Facebook page is also littered with anti-gay, anti-LGBTQ posts, and anti-gay hate speech. Yet he is allowed to sit on a board that was recently responsible for crafting an ordinance restricting some of these same people and their events to a certain part of town. He had a lot to say at that last meeting and a lot to say about me. Well, now I have some things I would like to say in return. This individual has no moral high ground to stand on. He may have left his past life behind, turned his life around, and found God. Good for him, but that doesn't change the fact that in his past, he was arrested for, quote, bilking investors out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, nearly $785,000 from 36 investors, to be exact, and later pled guilty to misappropriating $625,000 from his customers and was sentenced on five counts to up to 20 years in prison for first-degree theft for creating fictitious insurance policies and stealing people's money. Now fast forward to the present, and somehow this dude, this convicted criminal, is serving on the Planning and Zoning Committee of the city. He also stated that I am uneducated. Well, I'm educated enough to know thou shalt not steal. I'm educated enough to know what the Constitution of the United States means and its importance to the rule of law in this country. I'm also educated enough to know what the separation of church and state means. He targeted me twice, and the mayor did nothing. I believe for the few reasons I stated above and many more, this individual has no business serving this city in any capacity. I also believe that nothing will change and nothing will be done about it. In closing, sometimes I come down here to seconds. speak, not because I like to, but because I'm passionate about certain 
events in my community. I also care about this community and most of the people in it, yet somehow I ended up being the bad guy, and that's fine. Apparently, the truth and facts get under some people's skin, and if I'm taking up space in certain people's heads, then I make, must be making just a tad bit of difference. Thank you for your time. I'll let you get on with the business of this city now. Please start focusing on the issues that actually matter, and please start enforcing, enforcing the rules of this council so these personal, personal attacks aren't allowed to be perpetrated on anyone else in the future. Thank you, Nate. Thank you.